In honor of those sweet little fillies, this is the Birds and the Bees by the Worst Writer. And no, I don't know why he's called that, so... Uh, <clears throat> we'll probably find the out. clean, cool stream just off the edge of Sweet Apple Acres washed away the troubles of the day. Apple Boom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo had had an exhausting set of adventures and the refreshing dip was just what they needed. The clear waters washed away the heat and the sweat and the tree sap of another long day of play. Tree sap? They probably got on stuck in a tree again. The cutie mark crusaders had gotten an early start, terrorizing no fewer than a dozen ponies before noon. Their efforts had been unsuccessful, but enjoyable. Scootaloo's stomach rumbled, and her friend's stomach soon followed. They hadn't eaten the quote-unquote food they had made around lunchtime. Ugh. Something tells me they were not delectable. No, excuse me. Silently, the three of them nodded to each other and understood it was time to get something in their bellies. Excuse me, one second. Yeah. This, let me get my fan on. There we go. Because for some reason it's warm in here and it's cold out there. I don't know. It's fall. That's what happens. And one, two, three. Hi, girls! What can I get for you? You need cookies? Cake? Cupcakes? <gasps> Do you need a party? Oh, fuck. Pinkie Pie already. Go figure. Uh, no, Pinkie Pie. We were just hungry, Sweetie Belle said softly. Oh, that's okay. Delicious treats are fun, too. Uh, here, try these muffins. Pinkie Pie pushed a tray of muffins that hadn't been there a moment ago across the counter toward the fillies and smiled. Uh, thanks, Pinkie. How much? Apple Bloom asked. Oh, girls, don't worry about that. I can tell you're really hungry, and I need somebody to tell me how these muffins taste anyway. I use a new recipe. Oh. I hope Bye. it's good. I hope he didn't, she didn't use pony lax in those things. Huh? Lord Foss it reference. Old fan fiction reading from back in the day. Go figure. Free muffins? Thanks! Scootaloo grinned. You're welcome! I'm always happy to help a pony in need. Anytime you have a problem, you can come straight to your Auntie Pinky and she'll help you make everything okie dokie loki. Let's get out of there. Rarity stood next to Rose Luck, gossiping away the... What was that? Dogs again. Uh. <clears throat> Rarity stood next to Rose Luck, gossiping away as the Cutie Mark Crusaders trotted out of Sugar Cube Corner. Oh, I know! It's positively scandalous! There appears to be evidence, too. Haven't you noticed Lyra seems to be getting a little... larger? I'm fairly certain she's expecting. Expecting? Excuse me. <laughs> Expecting? Speak of which, Sweetie Belle stopped. What's Lyra expecting? She asked sweetly. Oh, nothing, dear. Run along and play, Rarity said, shooing her sister off with a hoof. I've never known her to have problems with her weight, so I don't know what else it could be. Oh, Bon Bon would be so devastated. Oh, I know! Now listen, sorry to run off like this, Rarity, but I need to be somewhere ten minutes ago. I'll see you around, okay? Oh, it's not a problem at all. You go and have a pleasant afternoon, Rarity said, smiling. Sweetie Belle hadn't moved. What did Lyra do to make her sad? Sweetie, it's nothing. It's just silly gossip. Lyra probably isn't really going to have a foal. Don't you and your friends have things to do? A foal? Why would that make Bon Bon sad? Because they're both mares, dear. Rarity suddenly went very stiff, realizing she had set hoof on dangerous ground. Sweetie was still a young filly, and she didn't know certain things. Things Rarity didn't want to have to explain right now. Ah, uh, but I feel you're gonna have to. <laughs> or we're probably gonna rely on Charlie. Hope she doesn't get another hands-on demonstration. <laughs> Applebloom and Scootaloo were now standing to either side of their friend, having become interested in the conversation. I thought every pony always got all excited about new foals, Scootaloo said. Well, this foal would have come from somewhere else, and... Rarity trailed off as she stepped backward. She was getting pushed into a corner, literally and figuratively. Somewhere else? Where do foals normally come from, and why is this different? 
pseudo Lil asked. Aren't you girls a little young to be asking about foals? We're not little, and we're just as <clears throat> try that again. We're not little, and we're just displaying a little healthy curi curi curiosity. Speedy Bell chimed in. What are you a dictionary? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's <laughs> ah, fine. Scootaloo, Applebloom, I'm sure your families will tell you all about the birds and the bees later. Sweetie Bill, I... What do birds and bees have to do with ponies? Applebloom asked. Oh, dear. Uh, you know, girls, this is a rather delicate topic. It's usually best for a young filly's parents to explain it to her, but only when she is ready. I, I just don't think that... Oh, come on, Rarity. Just because we don't have our cutie marks doesn't mean we're immature little foals. Come now, Scootaloo. I, I didn't mean to imply that. Please, Rarity! I'm awful curious! Apple Bull was making that face, and Rarity was having a difficult time ignoring it. Once again, like Beast Boy, you can't resist the face. <laughs> Fuck. She would have to give them an answer, but she didn't feel comfortable giving her sister the talk just yet, much less two unrelated little ponies. Recalling her own youthful experiences, asking her elders difficult questions, and remembering the ridiculous answers she had been given. <sighs> Shut up, Cole. Sorry, another Skype call was coming in. I had to disable that. Uh, I... <clears throat> right, I'm from the top. Recalling her own youthful experiences, asking her elders ridiculous, excuse me, difficult questions, and remembering the ridiculous answers she had been given, she decided there was no harm in stretching the truth a little and leaving out some details. Very well, then. You want to know where foals come from? Sit, and I shall tell you all about both the birds and the bees. Oh, boy. How about we fast forward to something else? Yes. There was a rapid and insistent knocking on the library door. Twilight Sparkle pulled her muzzle out of the book she had been reading and glanced up the stairs. She quickly shook her head and trotted over to answer the door. Spike! Please hurry and get Twi- Oh, perfect! We were just looking for you, Twilight! Applebloom rushed inside, followed by Sweetie Bill and Scootaloo, both of whom were struggling to carry large burlap sacks that were pitching and writhing. This is not good. Well, I'm almost afraid to wonder what exactly is in those bags, but I guess we're going to find out. Oh, hello, girls! What can I help you with? And what's in the bags? Oh, well, you see, Twilight, we was hoping we could get some help with a spell. I'd be glad to help, but, um, your bags are moving. Don't you worry about none of that. <clears throat> Try that again. Don't you worry none about that. These here are ingredients. Uh... Moving on. Uh-huh. Twilight had a... Twilight, <laughs> Twilight had a worried look on her face and then glanced upstairs again. Spike's been feeling a little under the weather, but maybe we should get him to help us with this. It looks like you girls have got your hooves full just holding on to the, um, spell components. I'm sure actually utilizing them will be at least as difficult, if not more. Just wait here and I'll be right back. Each of the Cutie Mark Crusaders beamed a wide smile as the Lavender Unicorn ascended the stairs. Okay, so this is- oh, I forgot to mention, this is before Twilight Cords, for the record. Uh, right, or whatever. Think she can do it by herself? My sister said it takes two ponies. Of course she can! Rarity said it was a special kind of magic, and Twilight is like the most magical unicorn in Ponyville. She's practically the Rainbow Dash of magic. Uh, okay. What logic? <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. Why, well, if even have the stories my sister tells me are true, she can definitely handle it. The Phillies debate was cut short as Twilight Sparkle came to the bottom of the steps with Spike right behind her. The two crossed the room and stood in front of the eager trio. Okay then, so what exactly are we doing here? Twilight asked. Yeah, and why do I have to come down here? What do you need my help for? Spike grumbled, brushing one claw under his nose. Apple Bloom spoke up. Well, you see... Rarity just told us all about the birds and the bees and how foals are made, and we thought it sounded real exciting. 
Twilight's eyes shifted back and forth between the two large scrubbing bags. Oh, dear God, I think I actually know where this is going. I'm afraid. I'm not sure I understand. Spike sneezed. A huge ball of green flame shot out in front of him and engulfed the bag Sweetie Belle was holding, causing it to disappear in a great puff of smoke. Oh, dear. <laughs> great! It took us forever to get all those birds, huh? Oh, oh. If this is... Dropping her cargo... What? If this is what I think is going to happen, I don't think this is going to end well. Birds? What is going on here? And what's in the other... Twilight's eyes fell to the lump of fabric on the floor as she watched the wriggling mass inside an inch closer and closer to the now free opening at the end. The Cutie Mark Crusaders bolted out the door, immediately knowing they didn't want to stick around to get in trouble and get stung. Oh, fuck. Uh, stung? Life Does that mean? erupted into complete chaos, and Twilight cried out loud enough that every pony bunny look at her. Bees! Son of a bitch! God damn it. They really went there. Rarity, what the fuck did you told her? Now I'm curious. Uh, okay, moving on. <laughs> Fluttershy quietly squeaked as she fell to the ground. The trio of fillies stopped running to offer their apologies to the poor Pegasus, and two of them returned to continue running. Apple Bloom did not. Wait a minute. Fluttershy knows all about critters and stuff. Maybe she can help get all of them bees back where they belong. Fluttershy stood and gently brushed herself off. Oh my goodness. Has there been an incident with bees on the farm? Nah, the bees are all at the library, scaring the living daylights out of twilight. Why would there be a swarm of bees indoors? The three little ponies all looked downward and shuffled their hooves. Hi. Curls, I know you're eager to discover your special talents, but it's dangerous to disturb wildlife. Yeah, we know. You just go and have twilight help us make a foal, Scootaloo said with a guilty look on her face. Oh, my. You girls are much too young to be having foals, and bees should certainly not be involved. But my sister told us you needed birds and bees. God, Rarity, Rarity you fucking... Oh. Idiot. Uh, I think that's light. Oh, goodness. I think there's been a misunderstanding, girls. The birds and the bees are just metaphors. There aren't actually any birds or bees involved. I don't get it. Where do falls come from, then? Oh, boy, you're asking the most shy pony to explain sex. Once again, the girl, the pony who was scared of her own shadow. Sort of. And, and who evidently went to the store and got two cakes. And, uh... If she had to, she will scare the living shit out of you. Yeah. Fluttershy's face turned deep red, and she shrunk backward. Oh, well, well, you see, when a mare and a stallion... Could you repeat that? I don't think I heard you. Scootaloo stepped forward. The powerful blush on the timid face of the Pegasus intensified, and she made herself even smaller. Her lips moved, but it was impossible to hear a word. Fluttershy, you're going to need to speak up. Where did falls come from? By this point... Fluttershy closed her eyes and became a shy, tiny, shivering ball of fur. Her mouth still moved, but there was no trace of sound coming out. Ah, uh, poor gal. This is what happens when you ask the most shyest girl in Ponyville. You're not going to get anything, well, you're not going to get anything by, as it says, a tiny, shivering ball of fur. Yeah. Moving on, the Cutie Mark Crusaders had returned to their clubhouse to formulate a plan to deal with the bees. Maybe they would be really talented beekeepers. Uh, no. They failed. <laughs> <laughs> they set to work drawing out ideas to get the situation under control, when Sweetie Belle stopped and set her crayon down. Girls, we still didn't find out where foals come from, and I don't think I want my cutie mark to have anything to do with bees. Yeah, me neither. Besides, I'm sure Twilight's magic crazy magic can deal with a few bees. You're probably right. Applejack, where do foals come from? Oh, Lord. 
The farm pony dropped the basket of apples she was carrying and froze in place. She didn't look forward to this conversation, but she had always believed honesty was the best policy. Never. <laughs> we tried to ask Fluttershy, but she just got a little embarrassed and quiet. Yeah, and Rarity said a bunch of junk about birds and bees and the magic of love. Ah, damn it, Rarity. Uh, we already established that. Yeah. Applejack slowly turned to face the three fillies with a nervous look on her face. Telling her sister she could do, but there was no way it was right to go putting ideas into other ponies' heads. Granny Smith was furious the day Big Macintosh came home talking about what his buddy had taught him about hard cider. <laughs> he came all drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty was all well and good, but a pony could get mighty angry if their foal learned something from the wrong place. If the Phillies had already asked more than one other pony and not got an answer yet, excuse me, it was unlikely she would be unable to get away with telling them something. Really? You don't say. Oh, well, I reckon I could tell you all about it. It's not particularly complicated. Uh, well, when two ponies love each other very much and they decide they want to have a fold together, they write a letter to the princess asking if they can please have one. Then the princess uses her real fancy magic and poof! That's how a foal gets made. Yep, definitely. Applejack, you would suck as a parrot. <laughs> Night Plays called it. Applejack is going to drop the ball on this topic. Uh, she already uh, did. <laughs> yeah. Scootaloo protested. Well, that explains magic and love. But that didn't have anything to do with birds or bees. Oh, well, uh, you see, the bird is the, uh, the stork! It's a special kind of bird, and it flies out from the palace and brings a new foal to its parents. Yeah, um, and the bees are just the way ponies use to send letters. Applejack's snout was scrunched up, and her eyes were darting rapidly around the area. She would make a terrible poker player. <laughs> uh, need it, but fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it! <clears throat> Fant a fantastic rainbow streaked through Ponyville at an entirely unsafe altitude. One wrong move and she'd be rainbow crash all over again. But avoiding risks just wasn't her style. She needed to keep her reflexes razor sharp so she could- OH MY GOD PEOPLE THAT'S WHAT'S UP! Turn her head and slam directly into a building before sliding painfully into the ground. She fell over with a dull thud. Should have gone a little higher. Bitch. Tell me what ass are you busy? You don't want to hang out? Scootaloo, come on now. Don't go dissing us just yet. Besides, we still didn't find anything out. Hey, Rainbow Dash, do y'all know how foals are made? Crud. This wasn't good. Rainbow Dash had limited knowledge of the world. She knew flying, she knew pranks, she knew weather, and that was basically it. She also knows she how know full of herself she'd be. Yes. She didn't know a lot. She was okay with that because she didn't need to know a lot. But there are some things that every pony is supposed to know. Things that are embarrassing to grow up without learning. Things that would make ponies laugh at you. Twilight Sparkle didn't know the first thing about snowball fights, and that had gotten quite a laugh. Every pony felt bad and apologized later, but it had been hard to resist rolling on the ground, pointing and laughing at a pony who didn't understand something as simple as throw snow, dodge snow. I would genuinely feel bad for Twilight Pair, but oh well. <laughs> not knowing how foals were made at her age was something Rainbow Dash could not admit to. The embarrassment would be too much. She needed to slide out of the situation as smoothly as possible without revealing her ignorance. Her head hurt a little from the crash earlier, and she was having a hard time coming up with a decent way to excuse herself for immediately flying away. She would need to have something important to go take care of. Something that was believable and didn't damage her image. The perfect idea came to her. An excuse that not only didn't spill her secret, but that actually reinforced the opposite idea. She was totally an expert. <laughs> and she said... Sorry, Squirts, but I gotta fly. I'm actually on my, on my, off on my way to go make a fall right now. Later! Expert. Cut. Talk about dropping the ball. 
We all been trying all that taking care of the bees yet? We've asked, we've asked this about every pony else, and we ain't any close to a good answer. She'll definitely know, but she might be kind of mad at us, said Scootaloo. Mad is an understatement. <laughs> Pissed would be more like it. Yes. Apple Bloom and... Excuse me. Maybe we should go apologize, and then if she forgives us, we can ask her, replied Speedy Bell. Apple Bloom and Scootaloo nodded at this, and the three fillies cantered back toward the library. When they got there, they noticed the front door was missing. Apple Bloom gingerly stepped inside and saw a purple unicorn covered in small red lumps sitting in a corner. Floating above her was a glowing ball making a terrible buzzing noise. Pinky? she asked. Twilight? Are you okay? Oh, it's you. Yes, Apple Bloom, I'm fine. Mostly. I just need to stay here and concentrate on keeping the horrible little demons in place until Pinky comes back. She said she could help me get rid of them. Pinkie Pie looking to help get rid of bees. I hope she knows what she's doing. It's Pinkie Pie, don't question it. Fuck. <laughs> I'm always that... just gone. Yeah, why not? <clears throat> um, let's see. Scootaloo came inside and sat next to Apple Bloom. We're sorry about the bees. Twilight sighed. It's okay, girls. Just please don't bring any bees anywhere near me ever again. Now, I believe you three have some very misguided ideas about where foals come from. And I know I have some books here that can explain everything to you. They should be on that shelf over there, she said, pointing a hoof to one side. A poofy pink ba pony bounced in through the doorway, carrying a jar full of peanuts and a goose on her back. Fuck it! Oh, I should yeah. be able to get rid of the bees with these! <laughs> a goose in a jar full of peanuts, how? Don't question it. It's probably not worth it. It's Pinkie Pie. That's good. The bees will go away, we'll get our questions answered, and Rainbow Dash will have her full! <laughs> Speaking of which, Pinkie dropped the jar on the goose, jumping up into the air with a gasp. Rainbow Dash is having a fall? I need to go play the Pony Star Tour. I'll come back later. Bye! Oh. And? The glass jar shattered on the floor, scattering peanuts everywhere and causing Twilight to lose her concentration. The Cutie Mark Crusaders fled the scene once more as Twilight's screaming and the buzzing of the bees were joined by the sound of a madly honking goose. Okay. Oh, shit. Seriously, I think this writer hates Twilight. Wouldn't be surprised. Sugar Cube Corner was more decorated than it had ever been in months. Countless streamers and curled up banners hung from every available surface, and every table had a beautiful triple layered cake in the middle. No expense would be spared for an occasion this special. Applejack and Fluttershy and Rarity had all showed up promptly, and Pinkie Pie could hardly contain her excitement. Sadly, Twilight wasn't able to make it. She was at the local clinic for some sort of minor allergic reaction that ended up becoming serious from exposure to large doses. So apparently, Twilight is allergic to bee venom. Well, when she's stung multiple times, how do you expect? Hmm. Dash was supposed to show up last so every pony could surprise her. She'll be showing up any minute now. Right on cue, Rainbow Dash stopped in the doorframe, staring into the darkness. All at once, the lights came on and the banners unfurled. SURPRISE! Dash stared at the banners hanging around the room, her jaw brushing against the floor. So darling, you simply must tell me who the Lucky Stallion is! How long have you two been seeing each other? Why haven't you told any of us about him? Is it some pony we know? Are you embarrassed about who it is? Oh, we have so much to discuss! Fluttershy blushed lightly and smiled. I am very happy for you, Rainbow Dash. Applejack quietly brought her face right next to the Cyan Pegasus. Her expression was cold. If you hurt my brother, I will end you. Where did she get that idea? Speaking of which, Big Macintosh? I barely ever said two words to him. Applejack let her long, whistling sigh. Whew, that sure is a load off. 
I just assume what with you spending so much time near the farm, I'm not sorry for thinking you would do such a thing without telling me. Do what? Listen, Applejack, Pinky, Rarity, Fluttershy, I don't know what's going on here. This is all just a big misunderstanding. A still somewhat lumpy Twilight Sparkle trotted inside, followed by the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Yes, it is. And it's about time we clear this all up. There will be no more confused little fillies, no more rumors about who's expecting a foal, and no more bees. Let's Twilight hope. Sl what? Let's hope. Twilight slowly plodded to the center of the room. When two ponies love each other very much, they can choose to work together to bring a foal into this world. There are no letters to the princess, no spells, no birds, and no bees. All it takes is love. Cue the Beatles any second now. Sweetie Belle and Apple Bloom smiled and cooed. Ew. Scootaloo frowned and stuck out her tongue. B but that doesn't explain where the foal comes from, Rainbow Dash stammered. You know, and and that's what they wanted to know all along, she smiled sheepishly. Ooh, ooh, I know this one, Pinky exclaimed, bouncing halfway to the ceiling. Ten minutes later, she had finished explaining, in somewhat unnecessary detail, exactly how a foal is conceived and delivered. Fluttershy, as expected, was blushing furiously. So was Rainbow Dash. What? Well, I guess if anybody was going to explain how ponies fuck, it would be Pinkie Pie. The only way she will know is if she either had to talk, or she was watching how the Kings were doing it when they conceived the twins! <laughs> Pinky, you are a oh. fucking scary creature. <laughs> Lastly, Princess Celestia stood in front of the door to her sister's room. She had played a terrible prank on Luna the previous night involving far too many frogs. Oh. She had apologized and promised to never use amphibians in her pranks again, but she wanted to apologize one more time. Celestia knocked twice and waited. Just as Luna opened the door with a smile that matched her sister's, a large burlap sack appeared in their face and burst open. Luna screamed and the castle burst into a flurry of panic shouting. There were birds everywhere. So that's where the bag went. Yeah, in the end. Okay, I'm just gonna, like, end this. I'm gonna walk away from this. And I hope to God we don't have to do with this ever again. <laughs> Quite an interesting little fan fiction. Interesting is the wrong word that I would describe it. <laughs> now, how about you go off while I go and seek some online therapy? <laughs> okay, I wasn't even intending to break any pony and anybody, but okay. A nice little short one, so good night, everybody. 